Selling a whole dinosaur skeleton at auction is no longer novel. It's been going on for years now, and it's a very profitable venture. Obviously, selling off fossils has been a thing since before humans even knew what fossils are or how they formed, but the commodification of the big, important megafaunal specimens into personal conversation pieces or investments for millionaires and billionaires is a relatively recent conceit. Despite the massive improvements in the processes of molding and casting fossils, rich elites still prefer to shell out money they could use to end homelessness on giant dinosaur skeletons that only hold value to science and the people who study it. As such, I am once again resolved to my Sisyphusian task of talking about each case of this practice and why it's probably bad for the greater good. To deaf ears, I scream once again into the void as yet another real big, real complete awesome dinosaur marches unceremoniously into an unstable future built upon unknowns. With my melodrama out of the way, I just wanted to bring to your attention a brand new specimen of the elephant-sized armored dinosaur Stegosaurus. This specimen was first discovered by who else but a commercial paleontologist by the name of Jason Cooper, who was going for a stroll around his property in the spring of 2022. To slather on a fun but thin layer of irony, this guy's property is in the Coloradan town of Dinosaur, which is not too far from Dinosaur National Monument. Anyways, the leisurely walk resulted in Cooper and a friend stumbling upon a femur eroding from a rocky outcrop. This then led to a year-long excavation and preparation of what turned out to be the largest and most complete stegosaurus specimen ever found. The stegosaurus, which has been named Apex, may not be the most complete by numbers, but it is the most complete at the size it is, which is twice as big as the actual most complete stegosaurus specimen ever found. The Sophie specimen now housed at the London Natural History Museum. Sophie was instrumental in completely reworking the idea of what stegosaurus looked like because every other skeletal mount was a composite composed of fossils and casts from multiple individuals, which could not account for how long the neck actually was, or the real orientation of the tail, or the weird proportions of its limbs. Apex may be so large due to an advanced age, as evidence of arthritis has been found in its joints. Only an histological analysis could prove just how old Apex was when it died. Sotheby's is a New York-based broker company for fine and decorative art, jewelry, collectibles, and priceless artifacts and fossils. They have had at least eight controversies since the 1990s, ranging from selling antiquities without published provenance, to selling stolen artifacts, to price fixing. These controversies don't reflect the conditions of every single auction they ever conduct, but it does imply some minor negligence with regard to the priceless pieces of human history and natural resources of our world that we should all collectively own as members of the only species sapient enough to understand them. More recently, they've been the prime seller of large dinosaur skeletal mounts for the last nearly 30 years. They are responsible for the selling of Sue, an Allosaurus, a Gorgosaurus, Triceratops skull, some bits of Allosaurus, Maximus the Tyrannosaurus, a Proserolophus, Clover the Tenontosaurus, a Suwasia, another Triceratops skull, and now Apex the Stegosaurus. Apex will go on sale July 17th with an estimated value of four to six million dollars. I would like to know how they estimate this because the material is made up of some of the most common minerals on the planet, making it basically worthless. The only worth that fossils have are informational. But before I get too philosophical or political again, let's keep moving. I would now like to bring attention to the complicated double-edged sword nature of these sorts of things. The guy who found, owns, and plans to sell Apex found the dinosaur on his own land, a chunk of property that has unveiled many other Jurassic-aged dinosaurs. Jason Cooper has done the right thing in the past in donating some of his finds to public institutions like the Natural History Museum at BYU and the Frost Museum in Miami. He is well within his legal rights to do just about anything he wants with any fossils found on his property, no matter what they may mean for the collective knowledge of humanity. But we should be complimentary of his past actions here. However, it does feel weird to then try and sell off an extremely scientifically important specimen like Apex for millions of dollars. 
I am well aware of how much it can cost to excavate, prepare, and mount a dinosaur skeleton. And by aware, I mean it's a higher price tag than I've ever seen in my life. Now, I'm not so sure that percentage would necessarily be in the six millions, but it is easily in the thousands and tens of thousands, what with all the electricity, equipment, manpower, resin, rubber, space, and so on to reconstruct an impressive display. I, as someone who is not wealthy by any means whatsoever, also rationally understand desperately clinging to any source of income and wealth one may come upon. Realistically, if I found a Tyrannosaurus on my property, I would want to sell it off. Can you imagine the freedom such a transaction would gift you? However, we're talking more about principles here rather than laws or pure emotional responses. Another thing I would like to make clear here is that Jason Cooper did every single step of the fossil collecting process in the best way possible. Or at least, so states the articles written about this situation, I trust Asher Elbin to present the truth. As it stands, Apex is considered to be around 70% complete, standing around 11 feet tall and stretching 27 feet in length. Apex also preserves some interesting traits, like weirdly shaped dorsal plates, unusual limb proportions, and even some skin impressions preserved along the underside of the throat. Cooper and company made sure that field data was painstakingly recorded as the dig went along so that anyone who bought Apex would have all the information needed for a scientific study if so desired. If it were to end up at a museum, it would still be 100% scientifically valuable as all of its locations, stratigraphy, and taphonomy is in the books. Cooper seems to also be more than open to having experts come back to the area to gather more information about where Apex was found if needed. The preparation team 3D scanned all of Apex's bones in order to have a digital catalog of everything, as well as to help fill in any missing bones for the display. Cooper made sure to try and get as many paleontologists out to his place to look at Apex and provide some insight on how important it may be and how ethical the conditions were of its excavation. As Asher Elbin writes in his article, If you combine size, completeness, and bone preservation, it is the best stegosaurus I have seen, said Rod Sheets, curator at the Brigham Young University Museum of Paleontology, who inspected it at Cooper's property. Prominent Utah paleontologist Jim Kirkland was asked to inspect Apex but declined, citing ethical concerns. As Elbin writes, It looks pretty interesting, Kirkland wrote in an email, but I will not promote something going to auction. I would have hooked him up with museums directly, but not this. Elbin's article goes on to state that Cooper and head of Sotheby's Science and Popular Culture Department, Cassandra Hatton, wished the specimen to go to a museum so that it may be studied by all. It's part of why so much effort was made to collect as much information about the site as possible. But I would think that if one really wished for this, then it would be donated to a museum or that some sort of private deal could be made with museums to purchase the specimen at a far more reasonable price than millions of dollars. Apex is expected to go for not much less than Sue did back in 1997. Obviously, the glass ceiling on dinosaur prices has been shattered to smithereens thanks to the 31.8 million final bid for Stan the Tyrannosaurus in 2020, and this is not a great sign for museums. Stan did make it to a public institution, but it's a work in progress museum all the way in Abu Dhabi. Hey, I mean, at least Stan isn't utterly lost to science, but no one other than an oil tycoon in the Middle East who happens to like paleontology and is funding a museum could have afforded the price tag. Only the biggest museums in the world may be able to swing Apex's price tag, which leaves out hundreds of willing institutions and safe places for Apex to rest. Elbin's article recounts that Vice President of the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, Stuart Sumida, stated, The Stegosaurus's potential price tag could be out of reach for many institutions. The costs of studying an already mounted and reconstructed specimen can be higher than just the purchase price. Reconstructing and mounting fossils is as much art as science, and specific choices can be used to hoodwink the uninitiated by blurring the lines on what parts of any given bone are real. If the specimen is as scientifically important as it's purported, then they're going about it entirely the wrong way. The last paleontologist to be asked for comment on this story was Kerry Woodruff, a Jurassic expert with the Frost Museum of Science in Miami, which is truly ironic given the complete lack of Mesozoic material in Florida. Woodruff examined Apex and was complimentary of the lengths to which this specimen has been documented, but ultimately prefers that these specimens end up in the public trust. 
Woodruff recounts to Elbin, if a wealthy person were interested in how they could work with a scientific institution to make a contribution to scientific knowledge and advancement, he said, then I hope such specimens would attract their attention. I used to be more militant towards private finds, but I think there is certainly value in fostering relationships with private fossil collectors. They need money just like the rest of us, and the world is continuously going to the ship, so we should all be empathetic towards the want and sometimes need to sell these things. But I also think it is imperative that we all critique each other over how to go about selling stuff. There is a real difference in value between the 15,000th Moroccan trilobite of one species that has been known to science for 300 years and the biggest and most complete specimen of five ever found of a giant dinosaur that could help completely revolutionize how we think about dinosaurs as a whole. It just doesn't help matters that it costs a mini fortune to get the giant scientifically important specimens out of the ground and to a museum for study. I am not an expert in law, relationships between landowners, fossil collectors, academics, and institutions, but it is clear, at least here in the US and for the foreseeable future, that we should be working together and teaching and learning from one another rather than looking down our noses at people trying to make a living. That being said, not all fossil collectors and sellers are as simple and empathetic as I have narrativized here. Jason Cooper definitely seems like one of the good ones though, so I hope people out there understand the nuance here. Apex will be on display at Sotheby's Galleries in New York until the auction, so go see it if you are privileged enough to be near that before Apex is gone. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.